is the Pro Football Chase Podcast, a podcast that has featured interviews with Rams wide receiver Robert Woods. 300,000 yards, um, and you know, last year, unfortunately, I got hurt mid, mid way in the season, but other than that, just just working and grinding to, to get to this point, and uh, probably broke it with a lot of games left. Packers wide receiver Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, just the fact that we got a, you know, uh, all pro on the other side of the ball. Um, and Devontae. Um, so when you got a guy like that, you know, that's just going to get the main focus. Um, obviously, you know, people start to know my name a little bit after I made a few plays here and there. Broncos offensive guard Ronald Leary. It would either have to be a counter or a pin and pull play when we get on the edge and run. Uh, I think it's always impressive when big guys can get out that stance and move and hit somebody. So In rising stars, Dalton Risner, Charles Amenahu, and Jawan Williams. This is a podcast that offers player perspectives from some well-decorated veterans, including T.J. Hushman Zada. And people will say, oh, well, is that Chris got a franchise quarterback? Uh, look, look at his record, does it? It tells you he is. Oh, he has a great defense. He has his Ezekiel Elliott. You tell me a quarterback in the entire NFL that's not time break that does more with that. Game previews, recaps, and analysis. Turn the volume up. The chase is on, and the chase is live. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into the Pro Football Chase Podcast. It's Isaac Signs with you, and on the line is Florida Atlantic defensive end Tim Bonner. So, Tim... I know you're getting ready for the draft. You just finished up your final season there with the Owls. How are you doing today? I'm doing I'm doing great today. You know, it's a little cool down here in Florida, but I'm doing good, though. That's good to hear. We got Sunday NFL wild card coming to an end, so there's plenty of football to watch out there. But, Tim, prior to your time at FAU, you played for Buddy Stevens at East Mississippi Community College. And not only did you play there, but you helped lead the team to an undefeated season, the Mississippi Bowl State Championship, the state title and winner of the North. So just briefly, can you talk about your experience there and how it had a positive impact on you? When I was at Mississippi, um, you know, everybody wanted to do out there, so I just were always like to myself, you know, mind free, you know, thinking about what I got to do for the future for me. So, you know, I just, every time I ain't had nothing to do, I just, you know, sit around and think about what I got to do for the future, you know, I'm going to be at, you know what I'm saying, like who going to come get me. At that time it on, I, it wasn't going my way at first until I, you know, had to get my stats up that everything fell in place. But playing with Brother Steve, it was cool though. Like Brother, I never got to it, Brother, like I, I talked to Brother like two months ago. We had talk. We had FaceTime each other. Can you talk about your experience there and what it was like having all those cameras around? I know it was on the Netflix series. What was it like having to work with all those people around you during practice, during the games, and in the locker room? So you just got to block it out. Cause when, you, when you look at it and let them know you right there, they have to distract you. And they throw you out your game for doing what you got to do. So me, when that was around, I just, you know, stayed myself. I ain't really changed up for the camera, you know. I just, you know, stay myself. And that's what I had to do. Like, only certain people got distracted by it, but anybody really distract me. I just, I just blocked them out and like they wasn't even there. Gotcha. Now, Tim, who inspired you to play the game of football? And at what age did you realize that you'd like to pursue a professional career in it? Uh, my uh, friend, uh, Dante Duke. He back in 2008, he was like, man, come try. And I was like, no, I don't want to play no football because I want to play basketball. So he was like, man, they come try. So I had to try it out. And I started liking it. And But then again, my ninth grade year came around. I ain't want to try out. I ain't want to play football no more. And then I, I said, man, I'm going to go and try it. And I tried out and I made the team. And ever since then, I, I just kept playing. I never stopped. Now let's talk about your senior season at Florida Atlantic. You finished the year with 25 tackles, 15 solo, four sacks, one forced fumble, one pass defense. How would you grade your 2019 performance, and what would you like to improve as you get ready for the draft? I really can't get no grade because this 2019 season, you watch fan, our Porter had 15 sacks this year, but I missed so many. Every time I got to the quarterback, they were so short, so they had a duck underneath me, you know, so 
I say if I would have my fifteen, I gave myself uh eighty. You know what I'm saying? Cause I will rush my ass all. This. I mean, my bad. I will rush my myself all this year. You know, and um, I wish I could go back to some of those games and do some things over. What what happened in them games? Cause when I watch film, I be look. I be always thinking that I wish I could went back to that play with him, but I really can't. So I so now to prepare myself for the NFL to not wish to go back to a play and wish I made a play. I'm a, when I go to the NFL. I'm preparing myself to make them plays. How did you like playing for head coach Lane Kiffin and defensive coordinator Glenn Spencer? I know both of them have moved on from FAU, but what was it about both of those coaches that really made your playing experience exciting for you? Well, Lane Kiffin believed in me when he first came to Gatlin. And Glenn, I met him in the spring, and he believed in me too, but he just told me I need to play with a little more motor in his defense. But as I learned the defense, I started to kill it. And Lane, he always, you know, been there for me. You know, so like Lane was like a, he low key was like a big brother to me because like we had a good relationship. I could go to him any time throughout the day and talk to him about anything. Doing practice, he'll come up to me, we'll talk, you know, doing practice. And Glenn, you know, he he was a, he was he was all about discipline, but he was a a good guy because he'll teach you to be a grown man and teach you when you make a mistake, don't make it no more. And being around Glenn helped me out to learn a lot about uh, playing defense and do down and four down defense because all we ran was do down then we got a four down so he taught me a lot about the do down defense and taught me a lot about the four down defense at 6'5 250 pounds is what you're listed at on the FAU website what would you say are your strengths as an edge rusher um uh, my my strength as been as an edge rusher uh I see I know how to finesse an offensive tackle if he jump out or he or he ain't jumped out on me. Now, if I know he's going to jump open on me, I'm going to take the inside move, you know. Like, my strength as an air rusher going to always come, kind of like, soon the ball snap, I'm going to, you know, I would think about the move I'm going to do, but you got to finesse it at the same time, too, you know. So, I say my strength, it, it good as an air rusher. Do you see yourself as more of a 3-4 outside linebacker or 4-3 defensive end, or does it really not matter to you at the next level? To, to be honest, it don't matter. No, as long as I get a shot and opportunity, I know I can go full speed and play with full force and show them my ability I can play football, you know. And, but I, I love to put my hand in dirt and then fold out, you know, to, to show that I can play in the run and the pass. You're going to be talking to some NFL scouts coming up in the next coming months. So what will be your selling point to talent evaluators that are going to ask about your potential and your work ethic at the next level? I tell them, you know, they give me a shot. I do everything you want me to do. Like, I ain't going to never be late for nothing. I'm going to always be on time. I'm going to always study my book. I'm going to always be a leader. I'm going to always show them I can play, I can play ball up to my bit I can play. I'm going to show them, like, I'm going to get up their money roof. I'm going to show them this ain't like, the old Tim Bunner from, you know, last chance you, Tim Bunner. This is a new Tim Bunner over here. Tim, do you model your playing style after any current NFL defensive linemen or linebackers out there? Uh, not really, because I just try to, you know, play, do me, like, you know, play my game, play my game of ball. You know, it's like everybody got a different game of football. So I always try to play my game of ball and not nobody else's game of ball. What part of your game are you most looking to improve upon ahead of the NFL? Is it your jump off the line of scrimmage? Is it your hand usage? Is it your strength? What's one trait that you're looking to improve on? I'm trying to get a little more stronger. And I'm, I'm, and I'm about to sign up for a karate class so my hands can be real good. Do you have any plans to participate in any of the college all-star games? Yeah, I'm playing the Tropical Bowl next weekend. Who's going to be your primary trainers during this draft process? Uh, SPE, Tony, and Nathan O'Neill at SPE. Now, when you look at the measurables, Tim, you know obviously that you're going to be tested with the 40, with bench press at 225, and the vertical. Of those drills, which area do you feel like you're going to put the most focus on to impress scouts and evaluators? To be honest, my uh, bench and 40. I'm working on both of them real hard. 
Tim, as you get ready to play in the upcoming All-Star game, I'm sure you're going to be lining up against offensive tackles from big-time schools, perhaps some Power 5 schools. And when you get those opportunities to go head-to-head against them, how will you ensure that you're making the most of your opportunities to catch evaluators' eyes and attention? Oh, I'm going to win every time I go. I got a lot of confidence in myself. I'm not playing against, you know, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and all that. I know how it is, so I don't really care what school you're from or who you play for. I'm still get in. I'm still get a high level at FAU against Alabama. It doesn't matter. I still show them, and you know, I I can play football. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about where you're from. It's about how you play. That's right. Now, Tim, as you move forward into the draft process, you're gonna see plenty of people, perhaps questioning how you can help in special teams as we know at the NFL level whether it's on field goal block or punt return or having a role on offense as a gunner with your speed and athleticism how willing are you to be a special teams role player for an NFL squad hey I've played special team my whole life you know what I'm saying after high school I got recruited just by all kickoff I can't for you ever like kickoff player of the year so, like, playing kickoff to me ain't nothing. I run, I, they put me to five, I run straight down that half. You know, so I play field goal block. I did good this year on field goal block, too. I get on punch team. I, I play any damn special team, it doesn't matter to me. Well, Tim, again, man, I appreciate you joining the Pro Football Chase podcast today. I wish you nothing but the best as you move forward in your professional career. So, take care. God bless. And I'll be definitely watching you out there as you take the field for the college all-star game yes sir i appreciate you calling me i appreciate talking with you tonight too yes sir man blessings and take care you too